This is probably the best haul we've had all month. Hey, it's done. I just got back from a call. Someone called me with a massive assortment of items, and it's something that I deal in fairly regularly that I can make a ton of money. Now, I love vintage film and movies and things like that. Now, I picked up over 400 reels of vintage film. Literally have a ton of it in every size that they make. There's quite a few sizes of reels. Now, many people may assume that this just isn't something you want to mess with. There's no way to look at it. There's no way to do anything with it. If you know and want to invest a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, you can make a ton of money doing this. We have sold single reels of this size, these 50-foot, 3-minute reels, for almost $600 on numerous occasions. Now, they come in all sizes and shapes. Most of them you'll find, at least these 3 inches. you'll find them in boxes most of the time. Let's see if I can take one out here to give you an idea. Now, these are 3-inch, there's 3 minutes, there's 5-inch reels. Uh, let's see here, there's 6-inch reels. There's seven inch reels, there's nine, there's 12, there's 16. I've seen massive sized reels of film. They come in many different sizes of actual film for the projector wise. So this is eight and super eight millimeter, everything I have here. I also mess with 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter. Now 35 millimeter is what they would use to project at a movie theater back say prior to 90s. Everything was pretty much 35 or 70 millimeter. Now I worked in a movie theater when I was 17. Greenwood Cinema in Northwest Toledo uh, for almost two years and I did everything there. I got to handle the projectors, take tickets and the whole works. Everything you could imagine at a movie theater. Loved working there. It was neat to get to see the movies at night when no one else was there. The boss would play them and things like that. So I've always been been into movie related items now there's not a lot of people that mess with film most people don't know what to do with it they're not sure they would have to get a projector in their mind and the whole works now the main question I get is do I watch them all and how do I handle taking images of what's on the film for eBay now, I don't technically project any of the film anymore these days. I used to. We used to project them on a screen, and then we would take actual clips or record parts of it, and then take photo stills from that. But for the past several years, we've had a digitizer for film. So we can digitize the film one frame at a time. It'll combine them into a movie clip, and then from there, we can take screenshots of anything we want in the film. It takes some time. It's an investment in these. You can't just come out there, grab a bunch, and expect to just be able to sell them instantly. You have to be able to invest a little bit of energy into these. This is a typical reel right here. Most of the time, the better reels will have marks as to how long it is in foot-wise or how long in time-wise. Now, this would hold 400 feet of film, which is about 30 minutes worth of film on here. You can kind of mark it off here. There's around 20 minutes on this reel here by what you see. If you've done this for any length of time, you'll be able to instantly pretty much tell how much film is on a reel, usually, if you're into this sort of thing. Now, we've gone through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reels of film. Some of the best types of film to sell are military or war-related, uh, movie-related to some extent. Uh, we're going to actually hop over and I'm going to show you some search results for what some of this sort of item can sell for. There is some major money in hand with these. Again, I've sold little tiny reels like this for close to $600. Reels like this with the right content could sell for thousands of dollars. The older the footage, the better usually. If it's in color, it's usually worth far more. Color footage from the 1940s and early, early 50s are some of the top end selling pieces there. Now, some of the hottest ones for us are ones that are tied to other types of collectibles that we sell routinely. Items from California sell for some immense amount of money. Pretty much most all of the 400 plus reels we bought are from California. And that's why I say that this is probably one of the best purchases I made this month, maybe even farther back than that. One reel with some good Disneyland footage, say from the opening year, or something else like Tahoe, or resorts in California, or even missions, can go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. A good way to sell these also, when you get these big reels here, you can break these down into 50-foot sections of very specific film footage. 
So if you've got 50 feet or a certain amount of footage from one specific place or one specific thing, you can break these down into separate clips and then sell them individually. You do not have to sell them the way you purchase them. So that's another thing that many people, if they're not into this thing, may miss or may not realize. So you can split some reels up into multiple sales to get you even more money, just like anything else. If you buy them in a lot, you can break it all down into individual scenes, clips, or reels. Now I'm here in the hub on eBay and we're in Terapeak and we're just looking at 8 millimeter film. That's all we're looking at. There's many different categories you can find these in but the most prolific is film stock. So that's where I list a large chunk of it. Also, I can list it in collectibles, sometimes tied to specifics. And if you spend a few minutes looking through here, you will see the high value that many of these can sell for. Now, a big secret here is that most people do not look through each reel. They will just sell them in big lots without any idea on what is on the reel. If you don't mind spending the time to go through some of these to either scan them or watch them on a traditional film projector, you will miss possibly hundreds if not thousands of dollars in clips that you may have. Most of the time when I buy a big lot, we make quite a bit of money from just a few reels out of it. You're still able to sell anything else in lots that you can't sell individually, just like with any other category or type of item that you sell all sorts of different types of film you can find whether they be home movies whether they be tv commercials or tv shows or full-length feature films can all be found you can also find eight millimeter with sound as well as 16 millimeter with sound many of the projectors at least the more expensive ones have the ability to play sound now there's also two different kinds of sound on film you will find magnetic which looks like basically a cassette tape piece mounted to one edge of the film or you will find optical which just are basically little lines running down one side of the film strip also some of them are in stereo some of them are not color black and white uh, there's many different sizes of film besides the standard like 8 and super 8 there's 9.5 millimeter there's a 12.5 millimeter i do believe and an 18 something millimeter also as well as 16 35 and so on This is in the collectible section under just photo related items. So again, if you look through here, you're going to find a ton of different other items selling for some good money. Train, railroad related in general, sells for some good money. Anything that shows neon signs, which are some of the ones we sold from New York, will also go for good money. If, say, you have film footage from New York City like we did from the 1942, 43, or anywhere in the 40s range, you can sell them for hundreds of dollars if it's in color. So again, you can sell them in many different sections on eBay. If it's, say, a Star Wars film or something along that lines, you will find them in the Star Wars section, collectible sci-fi Star Wars. If it's related to a certain rock group, you may find film actually in the rock group specific entertainment section on eBay. Another aspect, too, is the larger the format of film, usually the more it will cost. So 16 millimeter film is about double the size of 8 millimeter. So the quality of the image is far greater on a 16 millimeter as it would be on an 8 millimeter. The same thing goes for 35 millimeter film. It'll be far better quality than a 16 millimeter. If you search on here for 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter as well, you're going to see some selling for five, ten thousand dollars for entire ones. Now I know a lot of people are going to say they never see it. If you go to garage sales and estate sales, you're going to find it. If you go to local live antique or collectible auctions, you're going to find it for sure. Uh, church sales, I find them. Flea markets, all those sorts of places I can find them. And very reasonable, especially when you run into somebody who doesn't have a projector and doesn't want to mess with trying to see what's on them. So if you don't mind spending the extra time or effort to view some of them or at least hold up the film to the light with a loop, you are probably missing out on some high value collectibles. Now value wise and on the lot that we purchased, there's close to 450 or so reels in there. It's going to be based on what actually is on the reels themselves. 
Now, I only looked through a couple of the reels before I decided that the offer price was far too good for me to pass up. In these reels that we purchased, it looks like all of it is California footage. One of the reels that I looked at looks like they are filming a Hollywood major movie on a set. So these could actually be tied to like a Hollywood producer or someone in the film industry as well, because many times they did home movies on sets. Many, many famous people are known to have done that. The Three Stooges did it religiously. Laurel and Hardy, Star Trek, even William Shatner I've seen, home movies taken on the Star Trek set. So a lot of that sort of thing are highly, highly collectible. Another aspect on home movies is that they are usually one of a kind. There is only one example of each one of these films usually if it's home movie. Most people never ever made copies of it. It's one and only copy and that is all that was produced. So if you've got somebody famous in it, you may have the only film footage of that person doing whatever's in the footage. So that's another aspect on this. We have found some very, very expensive footage. One of them we had was a Max Senate, and if you don't know who that is, I would recommend looking it up. And that Max Senate short film that we have was an unknown Hollywood produced film. It was the only known example of that piece of film. Most of them were destroyed. Now this one dated all the way back to the 1920s. Now a large chunk, a vast majority of a lot of the film that was shot prior to 1930 has deteriorated or has been lost to time. So when you turn up some footage that old, those are the primo ones that can get you some big bank without a doubt. As I said earlier as well, we have made thousands of dollars off of film rolls. So if you don't mind spending and investing the time in it, there is a ton of money to be made. This is another area where most people just don't see a value. Again, that's why I do so well in the majority of what I sell. Most people think there's no value or they're not sure how to sell it. They're not sure how to look it up and they're not sure how to list it. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Sounds like you've accidentally invented a thermochemical energy source. A scientific wonder becomes a nightmare. Someone's walking around. With enough explosive to turn the city into a pancake. A power that could mark the beginning of the end for the $6 million man.